Hello all, Old Geek here, and this is a video that has been a long time in the making, or rather, a long time in the thinking about making. Namely because the artist I'm looking at today created so much material for my favourite old RPG, and that is David A. Trampier, or to quote that famous signature, D.A.T. Trampier's work first started appearing in TSR's products around 1977, and he was one of their most prolific artists throughout the late 70s and early 80s. For many of you, he was known for the wormy comic strip in Dragon Magazine through to the late 1980s, but that's not my focus in this video, as sadly Dragon Magazine was not part of my own formative years. I'm also not here to discuss his life and the issues he had. No, the purpose of this video is pure nostalgia. To look at his artwork and to attempt to single out my ten favourite pieces of his. And that wasn't easy. That's why this took a while. Clyde Caldwell, Jeff Easley and Larry Elmore were technically more gifted. Errol Otis was the king of the grotesque and the weird. But for me, David A. Trampier was the one who defined the look and the feel of first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. When traditional monsters are mentioned, more often than not, it's Trampier's interpretation from the monster manual that springs to mind. And I would believe that'll be the same for many of you who are watching this video now. Most of his work was simple, monochromatic line drawing. Nothing flashy, but beneath that simplicity lay an imagination, and an ability to encapsulate the feel of a creature or a situation. He frequently displayed a sense of humour, and an ability to portray the absurd, such as this image of Driblex, or these images of the Treant and the Thought Eater. All of these are from the original Monster Manual, but then most of you watching will have known that already. But those images that stick most in the mind are most often the ones that contain a story. The ones that pose questions, but which have few answers. And these are the images that will undoubtedly have inspired many, many DMs throughout the years. So, a top 10. This was an incredibly difficult task. What criteria would I use? Well, simply, it has to be my own feelings. But before I dive in, here are a few, well, quite a lot, of those that didn't quite make it to whet your appetites. And to give you an idea, my initial shortlist for this video had 46 images on it, all of which were candidates for a top 10. So some of the nearlies, the village of Homlet and that moat house, the vault of the drow, those iconic images of the lich, the vampire and the white from the monster manual. That entry passageway into the Tomb of Horrors and its infamous villain. Again from the Monster Manual, Beelzebul. From the Dungeon Master's Guide, A Miracle the Chaotic. Monster Manual again, The Fire Giant, The Intellect Devourer, and even the Lizard Man and the Rakshasa. All wonderful, wonderful artwork. Genre defining, memory invoking, nostalgia inducing, and none of these made my final cut. Some of these may be your own personal favourites, but that is subjective. So, for my own personal top 10. 
and I've tried to put these in some form of order too. And that's very difficult. But here goes. At number 10, quite simply, D&D's best ever image of the Medusa. Her expression is pure evil. That grotesque visage, the writhing snakes, a legendary creature from mythology, perfectly encapsulated in a simple, small line drawing. And number nine, dwarfs working their mine. It's not exciting, nor is it heroic. It's not monstrous either. It's simply a group of dwarfs doing what dwarfs do best. But for me, no image has better portrayed the dwarven race in D&D. Hardworking, direct, tough, honest folk. Their daily toil. At number eight, another one from the player's handbook. A successful adventure. Tramp's artwork, probably better any other artist perfectly captured the tone of early D&D games and rarely was it done better than through this scene of a trio of successful adventurers escaping from a dungeon with their loot. It doesn't tell you what they faced along the way, the friends they lost and the monsters they overcame. That's for your mind to make up. It's neither technically brilliant nor is it flashy. It is just D&D, &D, in a nutshell. At number seven, a scene from uh, S1, Tomb of Horrors. The throbbing gem, surrounded by the skeletal remains of those foolish enough to interfere with it. Some still grasping towards it. The floor is littered with what is left of their bodies, of their arms and of their armour. I think this is a magnificent image. And at number six, a wyvern in flight with its meal, silhouetted by the moon. Another one from the monster manual. The creature is lifting a cow into the air. The moon's light displays the translucence of the monster's wings. It's a simple, impactful image and one that manages to convey both the power of the wyvern and give an idea of how to utilise them in play when they're hunting. Random encounter. There you go. Plundering a farmer's livestock. Another option. Just simple ideas. At number five, my favourite single piece of monster artwork from the Monster Manual. The Groaning Spirit, or Banshee. This simple piece of line work perfectly embraces their terrifying nature. The streaks of light from the folds of her gown, her arms raised, her face twisted, you can only imagine the fearsome screech emanating from her mouth. Undead are meant to be frightening and this piece of artwork nails it. Number four. Another piece from the player's handbook, Magic Mouth. And this is a lovely example of a party of adventurers, in this case little folk, going about their dungeoneering. Their attention is drawn to a magic mouth. What is it telling them? Is it warning them of what lies ahead? Or is it simply a distraction? And just what does lie ahead? We can just about make out a pair of eyes in the darkness staring up at the unwitting group. What is it that is watching them? This whole image is made even more engaging by the use of light. Their torches flicker, illuminating the immediate area, but crucially the stairs downwards are shrouded in darkness. Wonderful atmosphere. And number three, the Remoraz from the module G2, Glacial Rift of the Frost Giant Jarl. Tramp also drew the Remoraz image for the Monster Manual, but this classic piece has an added twist. 
a pair of halfling feet disappearing into the creature's mouth. Easy to miss, but impossible to unsee once you have spotted it. Modern D&D artists are instructed to portray heroes doing amazing things. Such is the focus of the current game. It's all superhero, it's all fun, it's all power. But back in the day, we were treated to unlucky folk getting eaten by hideous cold worms with fiery innards. Number two, and this might get a few people squawking. How dare Geek put this one anywhere but in first place? But yes, it's in second place on my list. And the only colour piece on this list. The original cover of the AD&D Player's Handbook. Perhaps the single most iconic, most recognisable and genre-defining piece of artwork in the game's entire history. Stretched across both the front and rear covers of the book, it depicts a party of eleven dealing with the aftermath of a fight with some lizard creatures. Blades are being wiped clean, a map is being consulted, bodies are being moved, and two of the group are tempted by the shining jewels in the eyes of the great idol, later revealed to be a statue of the demon lord Moloch. It's a classic portrayal of a party of adventurers going about their business. Look at the party balance, the obvious blend of differing individuals, plus how many there are of them. Once again, it tells a story, but leaves a gap, leaves gaps for the imaginative mind to fill in. Who are the key party members? Who are their retainers? What are their motives? What happens when that jeweled eye is removed? What happened during the fight? And does the massive idol have any darker significance? So, my number one. Well, if you are a regular to our Wednesday night stream, you'll probably know what's coming next. And that is Treasure from the Monster Manual. Aptly adorning the page opposite that book's treasure tables. Not just my favourite David Trampier piece. This is probably my favourite single piece of fantasy art from my entire gaming experience. From the expressions on their faces you wonder what exactly is in that chest and just what are their motives. It's clear they have discovered life-changing wealth but do they intend to share it or are they already hatching their own individual plans? As to me, they don't all look much like the stereotypical good guys. But that's part of what is so intriguing. In modern artwork, it's obvious who the heroes are. But here, you just can't be sure. Once again, the image is dark, lit only by the flickering torch. Its light is obviously reflecting off the treasure. And once again, there are other parts to the image. The sword, the bones, the skull. Do they have a part to play in the future of these adventurers? So, stories, not answers. That's what makes great fantasy art. And David A. Trampier was the king of crafting a story from an image. Sadly, he passed away in 2014, but his legacy lives on. For many of us, his work was the essence of advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Thanks for watching. I've been the Old Geek. See ya.